Shalom, Shalom, first and foremost, I want to give all of the praises to the Most High. We should I say, we're going to give all of the praise to the Most High and the Son. Yahweh, Bashem, Yahushai, Bashem, Kamadash, Rakatai Yahweh, Rakatai Yahweh Shai, and Yahweh Bashem, Yahushai, Rakatham to all that are, that are part of this ministry. All right, so um, what we're going to do is we're going to get started with the scripture, and we're going to read Jeremiah 25, verse 23, verse 1. This is Jeremiah 23. Woe be unto the pastors that destroy and scatter the sheep right. of my pasture, mm. saith the Lord Yahweh Shai. Yeah. Verse 2, Wherefore thus saith the Lord Yahweh Yahweh Shai, power of Israel mm -hmm. against the pastors that feed my people. Yeah, so you don't want to be a false pastor. You don't want to be a false prophet in these last days like um, Pastor Har and, you know, the, all of the, uh, the rest of the apostles they got on the God, you know, which they know very well back in Old and West Street. And, um, you know, he basically broke down Revelation 12 chapter the wrong way. And, um, you know, that, I mean, that, that brother could repent and get himself together and just watch, watch the men that's got, that's got it all together. Because what you don't want to do is you don't want to be that guy that's misleading the flock, man, because of them breakdowns. So you you got to get it correct. And that even, that even applies to us, all of us. We got to make sure that we're on, we're on point with the scriptures. Because when you come out there and teach the scriptures, it's either you're coming off as a false prophet or you're coming off as a right prophet, which the Lord set up. But that's if he repents. Now, if he repents mm. and he gets himself together, then, hey, it's beautiful. It's all, it's all good. You, know, you don't want to be playing the role of a false prophet, man, because we already know, even according to the law, I believe it's in the book of Deuteronomy 13, it says, um, if there be a false prophet in the midst, you put him to death. Yep. And that's, that's according to the law. So we don't want to be put to death. When the, when the Lord comes back, whatever mm. cap you're in, you don't want that. I just, you know what I'm saying? You're going, brother. One of, um, one of the elders in my last church, he, he was put to death. It was a judgment from the Most High. Yeah. I knew them quite well. I knew his wife and his children and all that. Mm -hmm. Scottish. So some people might say he might be a Jake, but I don't think he was a Jake. But yeah. my, I found out he was put to death. And, and I used to have dreams or nightmares that he was chasing me a couple of times. Yeah. And I... I, the most I gave me wings and I was able to just fly away. That means that he was trying to get me while I was there, whether I, I wasn't really totally aware of it, but he was trying to get me like on some things that I wasn't doing. You know, that, it's all corruption. Yeah, yeah. So the most I put him to death, man. And I've I done a video, I mentioned it in, in one of my videos, man. The most I got him out of the, took him out of the way. He, was a, he stumbled a lot of people, mm -hmm. you know, people like, people like myself who was really sincere in what I was trying to find God. Most I put him to death. Could have been the corona, I don't know. Come on, come on. Yes, we gotta get out. This is Jeremiah 23. Woe be to the unto the pastors that destroy and scatter the sheep on my pasture. Yeah, and as we do know, the word woe means destruction. Destruction unto the pastors that scatter the sheep. So like I said, when you're teaching something that's not in connection with the scriptures or that something that doesn't belong to the scriptures, then use that word. Then you're putting yourself in, in, in harm's way, man. That's what you're doing because this word is not message. It says it in the scriptures that um in the book of Revelations. Let's get that. Let's get that. Yeah, because I had a dream as well, right? That um his wife came up to me, and there was a, her daughters and all like some of the church members. Was, it was a big queue lined up with women coming up to me trying to get 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 to know me, like introducing themselves to be their name, but. This is infamacy. You understand what I'm saying? Yeah. And this could be the fu a future prophecy that's going to happen because they're going to be sorry, man, how they treated me in there. And the most I could be showing me that they're going to come and bow down, man, as it says in Isaiah 49. They, you know, they, they should come and treating us and bowing down. You know, because there was there, there was uh, there was a couple of times I wanted to go around the yard and just go stupid, you know, carnally. Yeah. A couple of times I was thinking what uh, certain people, because you know sometimes you, you get bogged down with people mm -hmm. and you get upset and you don't know how to deal with it. I was getting angry and the most I said, don't, leave it to me, leave it to me. And that's the news I got that, I was happy when I got that news. Yeah, you just gotta just let the spirit do what it do, you know? Anyway, yeah, let's read this. This is Revelations 22, and we're gonna go straight to verse 18. Mm. For I testify unto every man that hath the words of this prophecy of this book, mm -hmm. if any man shall add unto these things, the Most High shall add unto him the plagues that are written in this book. And what else? And if any man shall take away from the words of the Most High, uh -huh. the words of the book of his prophecy, the Most High shall take away his part out of the book of life. Right, so you don't want to be that guy, man. You don't want to be that individual where you just, you just um, jumping the gun on things. You know, you're, you're winging it, basically. 
you don't want to be the wingmaster when it concerns this, this Bible, man. You want to make sure that you study to show yourself approved, and then when you come out in the street, now you're breaking the scriptures down the right way. You understand? Because this is a, this is this is nothing to play with. As I've just showed you, as the, as, the, as the brother just read to you, whosoever, let's read that again one more time. This is Revelation 22 and 18. For I testify unto every man that heareth the words of this prophecy of this book. Mm -hmm. If any man shall add unto these things, <clears throat> any man shall add unto these things. Going the Most High shall add unto him the plagues that are written in this book. Yeah. So you don't, like I said, you don't want to be that individual where you're adding and taking away that which is from the book, because then there's repercussions, as explained. So if you got it wrong, because we're, hey, we're in the flesh, we get it. Sometimes we get certain things wrong. We don't mean to. Say that. Um, and the scriptures say, um, a man Go slippeth on. by his, uh, yeah. by his mm. tongue, but, but not by his heart. But that's mm. for that correction to come in. Mm -hmm. You know, I've done that. Well, I've done video. I may be speaking too fast, missed the precept, or broke it down wrong. Yeah. But I corrected that straight away. That's it. And that's what you want to do. You don't want to have the heart of like, well, you know, who is this nigga telling me what to do? And then, and in that case, now you're still teaching the same thing that you was told that it was off. You know, so now you become this false prophet, ready to be going into damnation, according to as it is written. So we don't want to play that, man. We want to be as genuine as possible and as sincere as possible and make sure that we're teaching the correct doctrine according to the spirit, man, as it is written. As it reads, I testify unto every man that have the words of this prophecy Go on. of this book. Yeah. If any man shall add unto these things, right. the Most High shall add unto him the plagues that are written in this book. Right, and that's why it's very dangerous, because you don't want to be plagued, man. I don't want to be plagued like these people when it's all said and done. Being nuclearized when this war jumps off. I don't want right. to be that guy. Right. I want to be the guy that's going to want to get out of here, man. That's going to be the living, and that's going to survive the the uh, the, um, the over what is it the over scourging hell that's getting ready to take place and hit this earth. That's what we're fighting for. That's what we're laboring and teaching in the name of Yahweh Hashem Yahshai for, not to be caught into condemnation. So anyway, enough with that. Let's go back and read Jeremiah, Jeremiah 25. 23. Yeah, 23. I keep saying 25. Huh. Jeremiah 23, and it says. Woe be unto the pastors that destroy and scatter the sheep of my pasture. Huh. Save the Lord Jehovah. And you know what you can do as well. You can also get Matthew 7, the scriptures that I called for. You want that now? Yeah. This is Matthew 7 and 13. 15. 15. Actually 14, 14, 14. 14. Because straight is the gate and narrow is the way mm -hmm. which leadeth unto life and few be there that find it. Go on, go on. Beware of false prophets which come to you in sheep's clothing. Go on. But Emily, they are ravenous wolves. Yeah, like for example, you have these pastors, these Christian pastors that teach you that basically you, as long as you go to church every given Sunday, then everything's cool, the, you know, the most high forgiving your sins, even though you can go back and eat pork and you can go back and, and just be a degenerate and not really rolling in the spirit of the Lord. But as long as you go to the church, you're good. No, 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 that's, that's, not, that's not according to the Bible. And then also, what you can do <laughs> in the means is, um, man, I just had it in my mind, man, about these pastors. Yeah, and what these pastors also teach as well is the idea of prosperity. Mm. That's what you also have. Mm -hmm. Making it in this world, but according to the Bible, we're not supposed to be, those that believe in the Lord should not be in league with the world. All right, that's after the book of John. You know? <coughs> <clears throat> that the end what is it to, to be at to be at one of this world is an enmity, enmity against the most high. But Pastor Charlie Porchop is telling you that you, it's okay to make it in this world. It's, you know, you prosper in this world. But no. Yahweh Shah, when he was on the scene, he became what is it as it reads, he was rich, but he became poor for our sakes. So the men of the Lord, mainly done with Yahweh Shah, he was poor in his day. The men of the Lord are going to be poor in this world. They're not going to be rich in this world, but rich in faith and in the spirit and the believing of this gospel. Okay? That's our lot. Our lot was not to be at one of this world. Our lot was to be in this truth, to prophesy. Keep going, brother. Enter ye into the straight gate, for wide is the gate, and straight, Salakia, 
and broad is the way mm -hmm. that leadeth to destruction. Right, and broad is the way that leadeth to destruction. That's the world. You're following after the world, what the world is doing. You're just going as you may. No. You're supposed to awake to this truth and, and, and play your part in this truth and bear your cross and separating yourself from the world. Like, for example, um, a holy man such as Abraham, he was separate from his father Terah. Because his father Terah was worshipping, um, I believe, yeah, idols, but it was the moon god called Nana, something like that. That's what he was worshipping at the time. And um, when the Lord was dealing with him, it was after he separated from his father. All right? So the way the Lord builds on you is by you separating from the people of this world, not them being weak with the world. Mm -hmm. As the pastors would tell you, prosperity in the world. No. Go on, brother. As a matter of fact, if you're a pastor of the Most High, you're supposed to be prophesying about the, um, the, the up and coming calamities or the downfalls of the civilization you're in. Let's get that in Jeremiah 28, verse 8. That's what the real prophets did. They prophesied against many kingdoms, man. Because these kingdoms that they were under were not of the spirit of the Lord, but paganism. This is Jeremiah mm -hmm. 28 and 8. The prophets that have been before me and before thee of old mm -hmm. prophesied both against many countries and against great kingdoms of war right. and evil and pestilence. Right, just like how what we're doing right now. As long as we've been standing out here in, in the outsides of where we're, at, where we're at, whether you're in the UK is where we're at, or whether you're in you know, America, we've been prophesying about what? The coming nuclear war, the coming day of martial law being declared, which means Jacob's trouble, and all of these different things. Now, these things have not happened yet, but that does not mean that the Lord is going to, uh, uh, you know, that doesn't mean that the Lord disallowed it to happen. It just means that for a particular point in time, it's going to happen. It's a prophecy which will happen. All right. Prophecies are, are events that men have uh, pre that men predict. Predictors of the future. That's what the word prophet means. Someone that just simply predicts the future, or that is a spokesman of the Most High. That's all we are. You know. And and guess what? They're going to have the breakdowns correct too, as well. <laughs> that's another. That's another way of. of uh, knowing who a real prophet is, is when he knows the breakdowns of the scriptures. And I'm talking about the men of the Lord to date. Go on, brother. The prophet, the you prophet. Hold my phone. That's all right. Oh, <coughs> the prophet, which prophesy a peace when the word of the prophet shall come to pass. Come. When shall the prophet be known? Yeah, because what are we prophesying about in this, in this stage of the game? We're prophesying about the coming destruction. So if that if that comes to pass, which we know generally is going to come to pass, then it was found that we was correct. We was right all along. Just like the chip, the RFID microchip being the mark of the beast. We've been teaching that for ages and we still vehemently believe in that. So when that when that prophecy comes into effect and the uh, the microchip is is in full excuse me, the microchip is in full effect when it's made mandatory, then a lot of these other camps among Israel they're going to consider and realize that, yeah, GMS had it all right. And I'm not saying that to be braggadocious, but somebody has to be right. Yeah. We were right all along. Go on, brother. And I can and I can assure you and guarantee that it's going to be founded that we were right all along. I can assure that. Go on, brother. That the Lord Jehovah Shah have truly sent him. Mm -hmm. As it says in the New Testament, that we have a sure word of prophecy. Go on. When Hananiah the prophet took the yoke from off the prophet's Jeremiah's yeah, neck. Yeah, that's it on that. That's, that's it on it. that. That's Come it. on. Yeah, so go back to Matthew 7. This is Matthew 7. Where you left off at. And 14. Mm -hmm. Because straight is the gate and narrow is the way which leadeth unto life. Yeah, so the men of the Lord in this time, they're going to they're gonna refuse the world. They're going to let go of the world and enter in at the straight gate. In other words, be awakened to this knowledge and understanding. And while they have it, they're going to go do, you know, their personal travels in the midst of that. But they're, they're going to hold firm in the believing of, of the Most High. Because that's the Most High testing his men and then allowing them to become prophets. All right? That's it. Go on, brother. Let's continue. And few be there that find it. Yeah, and few there be that find it. Meaning the elect are going to only find it. When we come out here and we do these, um, we, you know, we uh, record these videos, whether we're outside or whether we're in our house, 
we're only we're only expecting the elect to get it. We're not expecting everybody to get it. Like the Christian churches. And the reason why the Christian churches teach the way they, they teach is because it's all about getting wealth from basically the poor people that go to these churches. Go on, brother. You and another so? thing, to appease your emotions. Yeah. How you feel. You know, because Christianity, what does it really teach you? Mm -hmm. It teaches you just, just stay as you are, come as you are. Yeah. Be wicked. You know, go to church on Sunday for the rest of the week. Back to what? Being a nigger or whatever you were doing. Mm -hmm. That's what Christianity teaches you. God. You know, basically they're demon and the labelers. Do what you want. But God. as long as you say, God, God, I love, you know. God. Hallelujah. It's, it's foolishness. It's just a, a, a sideshow. That's all it is. And you know, to a lot of people go to go to um, church because it's like equivalent to a club. There's no different, somewhat, it's quite similar to a club. Mm -hmm. People ain't going in to learn of the most high. Hell, the pastor don't care about the most high. He just wants his check yep. at, the, at, the, at, at the end of his sermon. And people just want to be entertained. That's the bottom line. Anyway, brother, let's read this. So the Lord ain't looking for people like that. The Lord is looking for those that are going to take take their cross and, and learn after him. And that's the few that's going to find Yahweh shot. Let's read that again. Verse 14, we're on Matthew 7 and 14, because straight is the uh -huh. gate and narrow is the way, uh -huh. which leadeth unto life, and there be few there be that find it. Yeah, go on. Beware of false prophets which come to you in sheep's clothing, mm -hmm. but inwardly they are ravening wolves. So, yeah, but inwardly they are ravening wolves, like for example, the IUIC church. Now you got guys that will say, why are you always talking about other Israelite cats? But we're supposed to do that. Yeah, yeah, I know what they say, oh, no, oh, they say, why are you always camp with GMS? They're always yeah, camp, camp banging. banging. Why are they yeah, just, can't. you know, they're troublemakers, can't. you know? It's GMS, GMS are the problem. <laughs> you know, they're always saying that. But it's not us. Mate, if they would just teach the right doctrine, Everything will be okay, That's but it. they're not, so we have to correct that. Because if we didn't, then That's it. the blood would be on our hands. Exactly, and it, and it also says in the book of Romans 16, mark those. Let's get that, brother. Mm. Mark those that, that are, um, what is it, that mark are contrary them. to the doctrine, man. Okay. And then also the Apostle Paul said, preach the word, be instant, in season and out of season. And not only just teach the word, but also, re re what is it, reprove and rebuke with all long suffering. That's what the scripture says. So if you're telling us to stop doing that, then what you're saying is you're against you're against the scriptures. We're gonna do everything according to as it is written. And it's really because we're possessed by the Holy Spirit anyway, which is this Bible. Go on, let's read this. This is Romans 16 and 17. Yeah. No, I beseech you, brethren, mark them which cause divisions. Yeah, meaning to scope them out. The word that you know, the Greek word is scope pale. So if a guy is going off on something, you're supposed to focus on that guy. Yep. And uh, if you can get access to that guy or reprimand him in some form of fashion, then you do so. You reprove him. And that's that's why we get on the IUIC and these other camps in some cases. Not as what we how we used to do it, but now, you know, we're more focused on the prophecies. We ain't really, you know, concerned about those that are not willing to to, to get, you know, get their shit in order. Because, I mean, there's a lot of things going on around the world, and we ain't really got time. I mean, mm. if Jake don't want to get it correct, then that's on them. Like the scripture says, he that is filthy, let him be filthy still. Yeah. But that does not mean that we're supposed to negate the proven people. All right? Go on, let's read this. Romans 16 and 17. Now I beseech you, brethren, mark them which cause divisions and offenses contrary to the doctrine God. which you have learned and avoid them. Yeah. But they, you have learned and avoid them. So that's, that's again, that's what we're supposed to be doing, man. Mark those which cause a controversy, or, or excuse me, that are contrary to the doctrine. So we ain't just supposed to just teach Israel, our people, the truth, but also we're supposed to reprove other guys so that the flock of those that watch us can be aware of these other guys, man, that's teaching heresies. That's why we do what we do. We don't get on guys because we like to get on them. We get on them because they, they, need, they need correction, man. You know, that's why we do it. Like, for example, um, the apostles was getting on um, the leader of the house of David. Hmm. Correct. Yeah, because he um, broke the scripture down, you know, incorrect, which is Revelation, the 12th chapter. And it was really because he didn't really remember the breakdowns. He didn't go over it, like the apostle Hall was saying. Yeah. Like, every single day, you got to actually study the scriptures. 
you got to get into the scriptures, man. Because if you don't study the scriptures for a long period of time, you lose certain breakdowns. That happens. It even happens with me. Certain things to like it, oh, Yeah, go on, go on, go on. No, no, yeah, cut That even go. happens with me because I notice once I stop going over certain scriptures, it kind of not completely vanishes out of my mind, but that's where that fool is because the scriptures talk about repetitiveness. Yeah. Going over these scriptures again and again. So it stays in your mind. You know, that's what I've got to say. God, yeah. So, I mean, this is the thing. That's why he, he broke it down completely wrong because he's not studying. You got to study these scriptures all yeah. the time. Even if you know the scriptures, you still go into it so that when you come outside before the people, you know how to break it down to the people. Even if you're doing a sit down, you know how to break it down to the people. You're comfortable because you went over it so many times. And then you got to get into history. And then you gotta, then you gotta get it to lo uh, ge what is it, geographical locations, and these kind of sort of things. Well, if you don't know something, you, again, like as the scripture says, study to show thyself approved. Mm -hmm. You don't just go, you don't just go and break something down you don't know. You first get to know the breakdown, find out where the breakdown is, right? Or find out how you can get the breakdown, and you and you do it like that. Go on, brother. Ah, uh, so lucky I was looking for that scripture that says um. Study to show that self approved. Mm. You want me to continue what I was on? Yeah. So, okay. Matthew 7 and. This is Matthew 7 and. 16. You shall know them by their fruits. Yeah. Do men gather gapes of thorns or figs or thistles? Mm -hmm. A good tree. So like yeah. Even so, every good tree bringeth forth good fruit. Right. But a corrupt tree bringeth forth evil fruit. Come on, go on. A good tree cannot bring forth evil fruit. Neither can a corrupt tree bring forth good fruit. Go on. Every tree that bringeth not good forth good fruit is hewn down and cast into the fire. Come on, it's like when the what the what, it's like the Lord when the Lord went up to this tree, he basically uh, uh, cursed the tree and the tree the, the, the tree uh, vanished. The tree um, died basically. So that was symbolic of the prophets. If the prophets didn't bring forth good fruit, then that then they was they was destroyed. They was gonna eventually be destroyed. Pursuant to the book of Deuteronomy 13, according to the law. If there's a false prophet among you, he be he be put to death. That's in the law. And none of us want that. We don't want that. So this mm -hmm. is why we gotta make sure that we're 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 um we're well studied in the scriptures so that when we break these things down, we can we can correct. Be correct in these things. Go on, brother. <coughs> that's it, that's it on that. Mm -hmm. yeah, go I've, got, to... I've got something else to back up what you're saying. Go on. This yeah. is Ephesians. So I forget it. Yeah, go on, go on. Ephesians go. 5 and 6. Let no man deceive you with vain words. For because of these things cometh the wrath of the Most High. Right, it says, Let no man deceive you with vain words, but therefore cometh the wrath of the Most High. As I'm going to say again, this is why it's dangerous to, to, to teach these scriptures and not have understanding. Because this could very well be you. And if someone's giving you the understanding, you listen to them. Because they have the, they have what it takes. They have the experience of what it means to be in this truth and they have the correct knowledge. So you listen to those that have the correct knowledge and those that are the experienced. All right? And the thing with Barack, Barack, he's got the experience because he's been in the truth for a long time. What thirty plus years he's been in the truth, oh, but yeah, but he 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 ain't he ain't um he's rusty when it comes to the the Revelation twelve breakdown as he did. Mm. He just mangled it, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like he just he pretty much broke the scriptures, man. Literally broke it, <laughs> not break it down, but he broke it all up. <laughs> Go on, let's read this. What did the other apostle tell us? Butch. Yeah, he butched butch. it. Mm. He patched it all up. Go on, brother. Verse <laughs> verse seven. And really, that's just, you know what, it comes down to, it's an act of pride, you know? Yeah, yeah. We were speaking about that before, if a man doesn't know something or he's having trouble, just ask. It's just that you simple, know? man. It's very simple, because we, I mean, I understand, we grew up in a world which promotes the, the spirit of pride, and you, know, you got to act like you got it. But come on, man, like, a lot of the times, you ain't going to get it all the time. <laughs> Sometimes, like, well, most of the times, as, as men of the Lord, we got to be honest all the time. And that's a difficult thing to do. Because of the situation, but you gotta be you gotta be generally honest about yourself and, and what it is what you're doing. Okay, because again, when it when it concerns these precepts, 
don't want to tread on dangerous grounds with the Most High, man. Because we know that the Most High is coming to destroy this world, and He's coming to destroy those that are, that are unbelievers, and especially those that are false prophets, according to the law. Go on, brother, let's read this. Read what you got. Yeah, um, all right. um, John 10 and 10 says that, The thief cometh not but to steal and to kill and to destroy. Mm. I am come that they might have life, yeah. and that they might have it more abundantly. Yeah, last last they one. They may have life. So how do you give life? First, you, you, mm. gotta, you gotta know these scriptures. So that you can invigorate people man, with the correct doctrine, the correct teaching. Mm. Let's read this. Uh, last one. It says, My sheep hear my voice. There you go. And they know and voice and I know them and they follow me. Right, they know my voice. So and it's like when we came into the truth, when we was in the midst of finding the truth, we came across other camps and this and that and the third, and we followed these guys for a little bit, and then the spirit led us to follow Great No Stone. Yeah. And when we was following Great No Stone, we saw what they were teaching, and it made a lot more sense. They had more knowledge and understanding of the precepts. So, yeah, you was in, in a state of mind of like, okay, let me just follow, let me just kind of like get in touch yeah. in the spirit that they're in and just follow it up because they got it all correct. You know, and they was getting on certain, I remember years ago, they was getting on certain guys that I used to watch, you know? Like one guy I used to watch years ago, Quash, I used to watch him for a few. Yeah, same here. That's the first camp I actually used to watch mm -hmm. before Great Millstone. Come. 14 Street, um, Israelite, mm -hmm. the, 14, mm -hmm. the yeah. big guy, but he's yeah. hella effeminate. All them yeah, muscles, yeah, yeah. but he's effeminate. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Quash. Yeah, I used to watch him first. So, I mean, I found out that um, he had a couple of things wrong. And he wouldn't really, you know, later on, as time went on, he wasn't going out every single week. He was mm. off on a couple of things, you know? And the reason why the apostles would always get on these guys is that they get it correct eventually, you know? Go on, brother, let's read this. This is a precept to um, correlate with what I was reading. This is John 14 and 6. Mm. 5. Thomas saith unto him, Lord, we know not whither thou goest. And how can we know the way? Right. Yahweh shall saith unto him, I am the way, the truth, and the life. Right. No man cometh unto the Father but by me. Yeah. So this is the thing. This is why we went to follow great. This is why the Spirit led us to follow great no stone. Because really, Yahweh shine dwelleth with, with the apostles. The Lord is not dealing with every single body. The Lord is oh, the Lord is dealing with certain groups of men and, and to just face the facts. Yeah, you may know the scriptures there and there, but it's the Lord dealing with you. Yeah. And that's who you wanna that's who you wanna listen to. You don't wanna listen to a bunch of guys that say they know the scriptures, but the Lord ain't dealing with them because this is where what happens with um this, this dude, what's his name, Barak? He was reading the Revelation the twelfth chapter, right? And he broke it down incorrectly. So he knows something, he knows a couple of things, but the Lord ain't really dealing with him like that. Because he's not in the right spirit. He's not coming for correction. If you don't know a breakdown, you you hey man. You approach certain men that you grew up with and you and you get the correction. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? And, it, and it's and it's kind of um from being honest, man, it, it can be somewhat of an, an embarrassment because it's like you, you have a guy with such experience. Yeah. He's been in the truth for a while and he just he just make the rest of Israel look bad, man, to be honest with you. So this is why, man, more so, you gotta get it correct, man. If 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 the most I puts you in a position where you're 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 on front display and people can see you. You you become a teacher. You gotta get yourself correct. Because you want up looking like an ass. Don't want that. Go on, brother. Let's read what you got. Yeah, my so um, was that? We was mm -hmm. in, um, Matthews. Because that's all that happens at the end of the day. You want them looking like an ass. So to prevent that, just hey man, go to somebody and and, and, and uh, people that you know, and I'm just speaking in general for certain brothers out there that may not know a precept. Just go and ask, man. Don't willfully read read the precepts, and you know you know damn sure the precepts you're reading, you don't get it. Go and inquire, man. Go see counsel. Go on, brother. Let's read this. This is Isaiah 8 and 20. To the law and to the testimony, if they speak not according to this word, yeah. it is because there is no light in them. Yeah, so you got to speak these words correct, and you have to speak this word in general. <coughs> to the First and foremost, you got to study of Yahweh Shine. Eat the whole roll according to the Ezekiel, the third chapter, and then go teach the whole house of Israel. So if you, let's just say you know 75% of the scriptures, you, you have no business going out there teaching. 
But if you have 100% of the scriptures and you know 100% of the truth, now you can go outside. Now you got to go out there and teach the truth. As the Apostle Paul said, we're rich in faith and we've come to, what is it, to distribute. Let's get that if you can, brother. Let me see if I can get that for you, by the way. I think, I believe it might be Romans. Because you got guys that know the truth. They know the breakdowns, but they don't want to come out and do the work. So you got them kind of guys as well. Mm. You know, so you want to be the dude that has the knowledge and understanding and that walk accordingly to this knowledge and understanding of that, which is what we know. This gospel of the kingdom, which is only for our people anyway. So um, you got it, right? No. What? Is it distributing to the necessity? Something like that. I'll find it. I got you covered. Yes, uh, yes. First Timothy six verse eighteen. <laughs> so this is um. And 17. Yeah. Charge them that are rich in this world that they be not high minded, uh -huh. nor trust in uncertain riches, but in the living power who give us richly all things to enjoy. Yeah, 18, verse 18. Going on to that right now. That they do good and that they be rich okay. in good works, ready to distribute. Right, that they be, what is it, rich in good works and ready to distribute. Distributing what? This gospel. That's what we're distributing. That's what we're supposed to be doing. Publicating that which is of this ministry. Not falling back into the world or falling back and, and just, you know, sitting on your talent. No, the Lord gave you the talent, so you go out and you teach it. So you got guy, you got two kind of guys that needs correction. You got those that know the truth, but really they don't know all of it, of course. They know half and half of it. They need to be corrected. And then you got those that are, well, actually three, should I say. Second of all, you got guys that know, um, what is it, uh, all of the truth, but they're not going outside. They're not going out before the people and teaching. And then they're not doing their sit-downs. So you got those kind of folks, and then you got people out there that really have no business teaching at all. What, what's not one iota? They have no, they have no, they have no, no, uh, uh, they have no dealings to teach, man. They have no business to teach mm -hmm. the truth. Mm -hmm. You see, so this is the thing. Those are the individuals that, that need to be corrected and reproved. And if they don't get themselves together, then that's between them and the Lord. And the mm -hmm. Lord is going to deal with them on, on, a, on a negative scale. <laughs> so yeah, Rock, um, now that we're done with that, if you can get me, they yeah, go back to Jeremiah 23. And read where you left off at. <coughs> Jeremiah 23. Mm -hmm. Woe be to, unto the pastors that destroy and scatter the sheep mm -hmm. of my pasture. Mm -hmm. Save the Lord, Yahweh, I was shy. Therefore, thus save the Lord power of Israel against the pastors that feed my people. Ye have scattered my flock and driven them away. And have not visited them. Behold, I will visit upon you the evil of your doing, saith the Lord Jehovah Shai. Yeah. And what you can, I, you can read, um, Matthew, go back to Matthew 7, Matthew verse 20. Yeah, um, verse 20. And this is why in the book of Matthew 